Today's edition of the podcast is brought to you by Coach Me Plus. Coach Me Plus is the leader in athlete management software and a product that I've been lucky enough to be using for a little over a year now. Only rivaled by the impeccable customer service that Kevin and his staff provides, Coach Me Plus's ability to constantly be amoeba like in their ability to mold and, and matriculate what you're trying to get across and bring together. Is, is absolutely fantastic. Their constant pursuit of better ways and better methods and, and innovations and progress to their own product is absolutely fantastic. Go over to coachmeplus.com, check out what they got, guys. It's, uh, it's something that I guarantee you won't be disappointed with. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. Today I'm joined with 2017 presenter and Michigan Tech head strength and conditioning coach Matt Tomey. Matt sits down and talks to us about what he's doing with his students, both in his undergrad and graduate programs at Tech. He talks about how training's developing up there in the UP, how things are going with football and basketball, and then we get into a little bit about what to expect from Matt at this year's edition of the seminar. Really excited to have him on board. Great always sitting down and talking to Matt. I hope you guys enjoyed the talk as much as I did. Let's get right to it. Well, Matt, thanks for being with us today, bud. Thanks, Jay. Anytime. So... Let's get us caught up with everything that's happened up there in the UP, and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right. Sounds good. Uh, well, you know, my, you know, my position is kind of unique uh, from a strength and conditioning perspective where I'm actually 50% strength and conditioning, 50% kinesiology. So I always teach five credits a semester now uh, in the kinesiology department. So, you know, and then on the strength and conditioning side, I oversee football and men's basketball. So I kind of have those three components uh, with the teaching, men's basketball, and football. So, you know, at this point in time, I'm kind of looking at my classes for next semester. Uh, and one of those is uh, an advanced strength and conditioning class, which is actually uh, a master's level class that uh, the head of the kinesiology department had me come up with and develop a couple years ago when we started our master's program. Um, and the way I've set it up, uh, it could be kind of, could be kind of useful for, uh, strength and conditioning staffs, whether, whether they want to use it as a staff or for graduate assistants or interns, or, or maybe give me some help and advice as to <laughs> how to set it up better. Um, but it's a, it's a discussion based format where basically the first week of class, I kind of have the, I have the students choose what topics we want to talk about. So we may get four or five topics. Usually it's only five or six master's students, so it's a small group. Um, so we pick, we pick a few topics that, that could be good. And then what I have them do, each student, uh, and they may have to do it in a pair or they may do it by themselves. If there's a strength and conditioning GA, they're definitely by themselves. Uh, you know, because they have the most background. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, that student or students lead that topic and lead kind of our research into that topic for, it might be two or three weeks. It's kind of open. So what we do, uh, you know, they have guidelines, obviously. They come in the first day uh, of that topic and, and lay it out for the class and say, here's the background research that I've done. Here's some of the different facets you know, of this topic that we could go into. Uh, and, and here's what I'm thinking. What do you think? And, and then as a class, we kind of decide, and obviously I'm facilitating that, uh, you know, which direction we should go and how we should, you know, how we should organize that. Uh, and then what happens is it's not just that, that one person or those couple people actually researching that topic. The entire class is involved in every topic. So, it might be, okay, I want you to look up this portion of this and, and you to look up that portion of this or, or we'll volunteer um, to actually look into something. So it's a, it's a collaboration on each topic that we go into and I'm constantly pushing them to continually fill in the holes. You know, right. uh, I try not to give too much information away, but I facilitate where it's needed so that we can kind of stay in the right direction. But otherwise, it's kind of like, let's get more. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Keep, you know, keep searching. Um, and it's kind of a, you know, by the end of each topic, we kind of have a summary because they'll, they'll have an ongoing PowerPoint presentation where they'll have bullet points and we'll add to it each week. Um, so by the end of that topic, we have a good summary of, 
all right, what did we learn here and how can we apply this? So I, you know, I think it could be, it could be something interesting that people could use, uh, you know, from a strength and conditioning standpoint, don't you think? No, a hundred percent. Even just the format in and of itself is something that could, I mean, obviously you would need a staff of more than, you know, two people, but you know, if you have a bunch of interns and or GAs and or assistants, whatever it may be, that's something that could, you know, really keep driving education within the staff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's a, it's a fun class for me to teach because it's always different every semester. And, uh, there are some unique, unique perspectives. Usually there's a strength and conditioning GA or two in there. And then we, we almost always have uh, a GA with a uh, track and field in some way. So they have a different perspective. Uh, you know, there's, there might be some people who want to go into personal training, so they have a different perspective or, or people even, you know, pre-med or pre-PT. Um, so you have a lot of different perspectives in there. So it makes it a really interesting class for me. No, that's really cool. And then, so how many times have you taught this? This, this will be the third semester. So it's each winter or spring semester. Um, so this will be the third year that's teaching awesome. it. And things yeah. are starting to kind of build in the direction you want with them. Yeah. I've, you know, it was really loose to begin with the first year. I kind of knew I wanted to do it this way, but I didn't know how it would work out, you know, when you just leave it pretty much open. Uh, it, it luckily, I mean, I had my two GAs were in the class as well as somebody else who was involved in strength and conditioning for a while. So was, I had people in there who were pretty experienced already uh, or, fair, or actually they're in the field at least. Um, so it made it easier than just having master's students who don't have any background in strength and conditioning coming in. So that first year kind of allowed me, it was kind of a test year. And I told them that, I mean, Tim was in the class and and Matt Gage, you know, my, my GAs and, you know, guys have worked with you too. Um, so I, I let them know, you know, I'm looking for feedback and this is pretty much a test year. So help me out with <laughs> how yeah. we should set this up. But since then I've been able to refine it. And now, now I have a, a good system down where uh, y- we can facilitate some good conversations. So it's nice, but I think, you know, uh, I mentioned in the Q and a also where um, the, you know, like a, a good strategy for continuing education is just putting things into a PowerPoint uh, and organizing your thoughts. You know, we read so many different books, blog posts, we watch podcasts, but when do we kind of look at one topic and really distill it down and look at, all right, this is what I know and this is where I need to fill it in. So, uh, you know, I think that's another good strategy. No, no doubt about it. And then on the coaching side, there's a bunch going on too. Yeah. Yeah. With, um, with basketball right now, uh, you know, obvi- well, at this point in time where uh, finals week is next week. So we're getting to the point in the semester uh, where we have a lot of projects due, uh, you know, final exams, obviously. Uh, and we've, we've started this year taking uh, session RPE uh, following their practices. So uh, I actually made up an RPE scale myself. Uh, I was talking with Brian Mann about this, uh, and he had mentioned adding emoji faces uh, makes it more accurate. So we have... You know, we have the numbers one through ten. We have colors. Uh, we have a description. You know, whether it's easy, hard, wh- whatever it might be, somewhat hard. And then emoji faces uh, that I put on there, which are kind of hilarious, but also, you know, the guys like it. Um, it gets their attention and it helps out a little bit. Um, so, what they do is, uh, I have an athletic trainer or an assistant basketball coach will actually collect all of their RPEs after practice because I can't be at every practice. Um, and we, we basically just save it in a Google Doc. And so we look at that uh, week to week, uh, and we can look at averages. And um, this past week, it, it was great because uh, it did exactly what we wanted it to do, which was facilitate conversation if the training load is getting too high. And uh, we saw the training load start to creep up. There were guys that were had... Uh, papers due, projects due, or weren't sleeping as much. Um, so we were seeing that accumulated stress. And uh, I'm lucky enough to have great coaches to work with uh, who want to collaborate on this stuff. And, uh, you know, the head basketball coach came to me and said, all right, what do I do 
what should I do in practice to make sure that these guys are ready to go for the next two weeks that we have two big weekends coming up. Uh, and so we talked about taking practice back and he shortened it up. I mean, it's less than an hour, um, right now, typically. And that's the, the longest practice of the week, um, is about an hour, a little bit under. So, uh, and he's usually pretty good about that, but, but it was the session RP was a great way to see, uh, you know, for both of both of us to see, all right, it's creeping up, you know, they are, they are getting a little bit more fatigued. We need to do something about this. Um, and so we did right away. Um, no, that's awesome. It's great. Yeah. So, so that was, that was good. And, and I didn't think, and we usually don't have an issue with that with basketball because the coach is so open. Um, but it was, but it's kind of nice to see him, you know, kind of be, be open enough to take on this, uh, new system of, uh, actually recording training loads so quickly too. And, and look at it and say, all right, yeah, what, what should we do? Um, so that was good. And then, um, on the football side of things, uh, you know, we're just starting up our off season. Um, but we've also had, uh, some big changes. Our head coach, uh, retired Mm -hmm. and, uh, our defensive coordinator or former defensive coordinator is now, uh, our current head coach. So that should be interesting. Uh, you know, the previous coach, uh, again, was was great to work with, um, very open, helped me out a lot, um, you know, getting rolling with everything because really it was the first football team that I was in charge of here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so he was, he was good to work with. Uh, I, I had a lot of freedom there. Uh, and this coach, I anticipate being the same or, um, you know, even, even a little bit more open. Um, he's met with me quite a few times. He's emphasized to the players uh, the importance of strength and conditioning, um, the importance of the weight room and what we do in there. And, and right now at this point, this will be my fifth off season, uh, with this team. And our culture is just amazing on that team. And I, you know, I don't know, uh, like I was just saying to you, um, you know, I don't know if I could pinpoint anything that I specifically did to, to facilitate that. Uh, but somehow it, it happened. You know, I, I think it. I think it almost comes from uh, trust. You know, trust in the strength and conditioning staff, trust in the coaching staff, seeing the results. Um, you know, knowing that we care about them, um, and you know what the result is is basically you have almost 100 percent of the guys who actually just want to do everything right. You know, you don't have to force anything. It, so. Um, that's worked out really well. So I'm really excited about the off season, um, you know, to get rolling with those guys. No, that's awesome. And of course, you know, as we know, culture and buying is everything, but piggyback into that RPE, are you doing that with your coach too, having him rate practice or is it just the players? Uh, I haven't yet, but that's a good point. Cause we were talking about that. Uh, we talked about that on Monday with the, with the coaches, um, because then you can kind of see, you know, where what he thinks it's like and then we can kind of see if there's a you know what the proportion between what he's what he's looking at versus what the players are looking at and i'm guessing you know with him it's almost every monday is probably the same right mm-hmm. uh you know typical every tuesday is probably mm-hmm. going to be the same but uh you know other players responding the same um and and so yeah that's actually something that i'm planning on implementing uh and talking with him about because that came up monday also yeah, no, I think those numbers are always neat when you can look and be like, well, I thought it was a six, and they thought it was a nine, and then it's like, mm-hmm. well, why? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I think that's super neat. Yeah, exactly. And we, yeah, we had a kid who was a nine, and, uh, and it, wasn't, it wasn't a bad, it was an hour and a half practice. It wasn't, it wasn't really that bad, um, and I saw him at lift the next day. It was, oh, everybody's like, oh, he, he was a nine yesterday, and, you know. Um, I look at him and his eyes are just bloodshot and, you know, blank face. And he's just like, yeah, I've slept like two hours, you know, the last couple nights working on projects and everything. So it's like, all right, you pretty much need, you don't need a lift right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's been kind of interesting to look at. No, that's awesome. And then with the Q and a and the announcement last week, you being on the docket, let's talk about what we can expect come July. All right. Well, 
you know, I'm kind of still brainstorming some different things, but in, uh, in general, uh, I'm kind of looking at talking about uh, the GPP that we use, uh, which is Dr. Yes's 1 by 20 progression. Uh, and then I also kind of want to talk a little bit about the conditioning uh, that we do, which is kind of different, also uh, similar principles to the 1 by 20 progression, where it's pretty minimal. Um, and, you know, there will also be some principles throughout that are applicable, even if you don't want to use the 1 by 20 uh, progression. Um, there'll be some principles throughout that are probably applicable to almost any program uh, that I want to talk about. But, you know, I, I really just want to discuss these things because, and I know you have too, and everybody that uh, we know has used them has, has gotten great results with, uh, with these methods. So uh, I just want to kind of present something that might be different, um, that might be a different solution to GPP. Um, in a college setting or even high school setting, um, that's very that's very effective, uh, very easy way to, to start out. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess uh, I don't know. We'll talk about it more uh, at Richmond. You know, something that something that I always talk about in my undergraduate strength and conditioning class when we talk about GPP is we shouldn't overestimate or underestimate the importance of GPP. And I think that. Lately in our field, we've been talking a lot about, uh, you know, that we need to move on from GPP eventually. You know, strength is only so important, right? General strength is only so important. Um, and that's good. Those are good conversations. Um, I also think that we shouldn't let the pendulum swing too far because, you know, for a long time, it seemed like it was only GPP that we were doing is GPP on top of GPP and we were doing too much. Now we're starting to re recognize that that maybe isn't the best way to go about things. Uh, but I also think we need to keep in mind that some of these general strength abilities uh, and building them effectively are extremely important uh, and show huge benefits, especially early on in the career. And then, and then just maintaining those when we, when we begin to build, uh, you know, even more, uh, I guess, focus on the uh, specificity side of things. Yes, 100%. And I think that the principles part, is what might be the biggest take home because I think a lot of people when they hear any of us talk and we, we bring up the one by 20, there's a lot of people I think that just shut it off and they, mm -hmm. because it's, it's different. Um, and I think there's some people who go the other way too, who, when you start talking about it, kind of um, get a little too excited Yeah, because it is just GPP. And I think that yeah. that's what's important. Yeah, exactly. It's just one component of what we do. Um, it's not everything, um, but it does work. It does work very well. It's very effective. Um, but you know, like you said, I th like where a lot of people might hear it and, and shut it off. It's. I feel like there's a lot of um, misunderstanding, maybe about how to apply it. And again, is that everything we do? No, we don't just do one set of 20 reps. Um, you know, and I mean, even with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the guys who are fourth or fifth year in football right now, they might be doing four weeks of that. And then the rest of the off season, they're not doing one by 20, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's, uh, it all has its place. Um, so I guess I would just be focusing mainly on this one piece, um, but also kind of clearing up misconceptions about that piece and then how to apply it properly. Yes. And understanding that the application is still going to be extremely similar to what other people discuss using different methods. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Any, any general methods that you use, you could apply it very similarly uh obviously it's not it's not exactly the same but it would fit in in that category right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then the conditioning aspect follows right along with it another thing that people yeah. might kind of you know take a step back and be like huh when when you start talking about it but it's the same it's the same idea that you can't throw the baby out with the bath water when you're looking at what's being done because of identifying the program based on the exercise selection it's the principles behind it that are what are important yeah yeah well and you know 
uh, the conditioning the conditioning was actually it, it's something that I rack my brain about all the time and it probably you know because my background is in exercise physiology so then I'm seeing a lot a lot of these questions always come up um, and it, it's hard to simplify things it's hard to not look at so many different things at once uh, when you just when you just kind of simplify things sit back and say all right we're gonna do this uh, and let's see what happens and then um, we can make kind of assumptions about what we think is going on physiologically. Uh, and some of those things we know, some of those things we might think we know, but there's a lot more to it than that, you know? Um, so I don't think that, I don't think that we should always, um, you know, judge our programs or change our programs based on, um, kind of what we think we might know from a scientific basis, even though obviously that's important. Um, I think we need to look at what's actually going on in a practical sense as well. So what's, what's actually happening? Um, you know, cause we could, for example, we could look at something and say, this shouldn't work because of X, but it does, you know? So, so why, why does it, maybe we should focus on why it does work. Uh, and I'm always trying to look at, uh, you know, these programs and try and figure out, uh, what could be wrong. Uh, but we also kind of need to figure out, well, what, what could be right. If this, if this is showing good results, then, then why, it, you know, is it counterintuitive to what we, what we would traditionally think? Um, so uh, that's kind of, um, I guess that's kind of in a nutshell what I, what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. The principles behind the programming and, and how they fit together into the different aspects. I think that'll be pretty awesome. Yeah. Especially because there have been people that have asked repeatedly you know because we do bring in people who are in pretty fortunate situations very often and they want someone who's more like the rest of us mm -hmm. you know and yeah the fact that you have to do the 50 50 and and those things um it, it's should resonate with you know again what we've talked about like we put the questions up for people to pick what Dr. Mann wants. Like, this is something people want. So I'm really excited to see it. I'm really excited to, to, to get the conversation going because if people are attentive and, and can pull from the principles what the program is, I think that this could be another big question-driving, discussion-driving talk. Yeah, and that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, I, like, like you and I have talked about with really the purpose – of the seminar is let's just throw out here. Here's some things that I'm doing that I've seen that have worked well. Uh, what do you think? You know, that, that kind of thing. And, and I want, I want feedback too, you know, so that'll be interesting. I th I'm, I'm excited about uh, the conversations following the talk even more so. Yeah. I mean, we got 49 questions last year, so hopefully we can set another PR with that. And I think that, if people can pick those things apart and, and look at them independently, I think it'll be, I think this is going to be one very conversation driven topic. And that's why I'm really excited for it in July. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No, I'm too. <laughs> yeah, man. It's going to be great. Well, Matt, man, thank you so much for, for spending the time and, and I'm, I'm pumped for July, man. I can't wait for it. I can't wait for the talk. It's going to be great. And, you know, catching up with what you're doing out there. Um, people should post questions with how you organize that class below either on this page or Facebook or whatever, because I think that that's something that, that we need to be better at with how we, we educate our staffs and we continue to, to push the, the levers, you know, and I think that your point about we read all this stuff and there's no real organization. It's just like, I read a book and I took something from it. Yeah. And it's thrown in, you know, the pot to make the chili. It's not, I think that idea with the PowerPoint's awesome. So coaches, anybody listening, questions, thoughts, comments, ways you use it already. I know there are some people who do things similar where they have people just do presentations, but, uh, and, and, and how it works for you, leave them below. Let's get conversation going right now with that guys. Yeah, for sure. I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to see those. Well, and, and, you know, maybe it helped me uh, kind of modify things a bit, too. 
Yeah, no doubt. Well, hey, Maddie, thank you so much for being with us, buddy. We'll be in touch real soon. This is this is awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Jay. All right, man. We'll talk soon. All right. And a huge thanks to 2017 presenter and Michigan Tech head strength and conditioning coach Matt Tomey for sitting down with us today. Guys, uh, the environment that he sets there with his class is exactly what we're trying to do here. So that's absolutely fantastic stuff. You know I love that. He's doing great work, getting great results. The football and basketball team's up there, and it's showing with wins on the court and the field. And on top of that, guys, uh, really excited to see what Matt has to bring for us here in July. July can't come soon enough. And the one thing that people have constantly asked, everyone is really impressed with the lineups that we bring in. Everyone loves that we bring in these big-time Power 5 people and these big-time internationals to come talk. But what they're asking for now more and more over the last four years is someone who is really getting it done, not at a Power 5 place. So someone who doesn't quite have Power 5 resources but gets great results, Matt Tomey's at the top of that list, guys. He's going to kill it. Can't wait for July. I hope you guys are excited as much as I am for that because it can't get here soon enough for me. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed the conversation, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. Just trying to spread the word, getting the word out about the seminar this year, the 2017 edition. We've already announced Dr. Brian Mann. We've announced Matt Tomey. We're announcing another person Wednesday, so make sure you be on the lookout for that. And as always, guys, thank you for everything you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We'll be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then.